I want to thank all my wonderful teachers, family, and friends who are here today. And most of all, my fellow seniors for giving me the honor of speaking. So, a few weeks back, when I first started planning this speech, I realized that every possible speech has been given before. The reach for the stars speech, the don't reach for the stars speech, the speech about writing a speech. It's all been done. So I thought that today, instead of giving a speech of my own, um, for the next half hour or so, I'd just read aloud to you from my favorite book, Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother. <laughs> I'm really glad you guys got that joke. <laughs> Alright, so really, no. I actually did write a speech, and my friends, the unrivaled, indomitable class of 2011, today I want to talk about us. Along the way, I have just three things to say. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet, and then let's graduate already. So, seniors, who were we at Hopkins? We were the dream class. I don't think any class in Hopkins history has spent so much time in the library, broken so many records, or possessed so much raw talent. We threw ourselves into our passions as DJs, paramedics, and painters, running backs, horseback riders, and center mids, with unparalleled work ethic, integrity, and zeal. We poured hundreds of hours into term papers and test preparations. I'll never forget from my 10th grade chem class, guys, we had this year-long Facebook inbox where we just cried about chemistry and did every possible practice problem. And, well, it paid off. Yet somehow, we still managed to have fun. Seniors, we were a class that crossed a lot of lines. We had ghost riding incidents. <laughs> We put something in the water. <laughs> and as far as I know, we're the first Hopkins class ever to graduate in sunglasses. <laughs> Alright, sorry, I'm taking these off. Um, now all of this is amazing, it's wonderful, it's who we are as a class. But the first point I want to make today is that who you were at Hopkins does not define who you will be for the rest of your life. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a mother, she had seven kids. She one day gave her kids some paint to play with. Six out of the seven kids took the paint and painted puppets. The last kid took the paint and drew a life-size army battalion around the walls of the room. Perhaps unsurprisingly, this kid grew up to be Napoleon. <laughs> Similarly, some of you already know exactly who you want to be. Sam, I'm talking to you right now. I expect you to be president at least, sorry, at most, by our 30th reunion. <laughs> Deacon Phelps, I want to see that Nobel Prize. And Adam, wherever you are, you better be a five-star general. <laughs> now let me tell you another story. A couple years ago, a student girl from Tennessee plays in the school marching band, aces the SAT, gets into Barnard. Today, that girl is Kesha, spelled with a dollar sign. <laughs> Just be yourself. I know these are supposed to be words of freedom, and of course they are, but it seems to me they can also be constricting. When you change, people get scared. It takes bravery to step out of your comfort zone, and people will always have something to say about it. You make new friends, and suddenly, oh, you're a social climber. You wear a new outfit to school, and suddenly, oh, you're trying so hard. No! Okay, maybe the denim jumpsuit was a terrible idea. But don't listen. You have absolutely no obligation to be who you are at 18 for the rest of your life. It's not wrong to change. Be yourself means be whoever you want to be, not be who your friends think you are, not be the same person you were last year. If you've always known what you want to be, more power to you. 
But it's equally great if you wake up tomorrow morning thinking, I'm going to take a gap year and make a documentary in Cambodia. I know I signed up for Teach for America this fall, but I want to start a hedge fund. <laughs> Dare to be who you're not. The world has no right to tell you who you are, so don't let anyone's judgment or expectations hold you back. That's point one. But let's first come back now to who we are, class of 2011. I began the speech by saying that we crossed lines together. But let's face the reality. We go to Hopkins. Sure, we all make a big show of living life on the edge. Macbeth paper due next period? Have it started. You hear that everywhere. <laughs> but everyone knows in 55 minutes that paper will be on Mr. Johnson's desk. <laughs> That's also part of who we are. We want so badly to be rebellious, but we always get the job done. So I think there's a good chance that, sometime in the future, when we are free from the constraints of Hawkins, many of us will want to do more than talk about breaking the mold. And this is point two. If you want to rebel, rebel in a way that matters. There's a quote I love from Lolita, and this is probably the first time a valedictorian thought it was a good idea to quote a child molesting psychopath. <laughs> that reads as follows. <clears throat> it occurred to me, not by way of protest, not as a symbol or anything like that, but merely as a novel experience, that since I had disregarded all laws of humanity, I might as well disregard the rules of traffic. So I crossed to the left side of the highway and checked the feeling, and the feeling was good. A rebel has courage. A rebel undertakes personal risk for something they believe in. Anyone can say, oh, forget this, and cut class and smoke weed. You know why? Because it's easy. It doesn't make you a rebel. You're a failing cog in the machine, but you are still a cog in the machine. So if you don't like the system, get out of the system. Because a lot of the time, the system is wrong. I don't need to describe societal injustice. You know it's out there. There is so much to fix. So often, the system is broken. I think it's also a mistake to think that we have somehow maxed out or arrived. With iPads, 3D printers, and 4G networks, it may feel as though things can't get any better, as though we've already made every possible breakthrough. But let me tell you, people felt the same way when fire came out for the first time, <laughs> and then stairs, and car phones. I don't even know what a car phone is, I had to Google that. Um, <laughs> it sounded old. <laughs> there is always something unfathomable around the corner. Instead of being shocked by the next earth-shattering discovery, make that discovery. Be the one salmon that thins swims downstream. Rock other people's worlds. If you want to be a rebel, don't just break the rules make the rules. You could characterize rebellion as doing the wrong thing for the right reason. My final point is that sometimes it's also okay to do the right thing for the wrong reason. What is the right reason to do the right thing? I think we wrestle with this question all the time. We know too much to think people are saints. Seniors, you especially know what I'm talking about, I hope. You all filled out the Common App and included these 5,000 hours of community service and soup kitchens. It can make you more focused on the motive than the deed itself. You wonder if people actually care about the impoverished nation they're hosting their bake sale for. You want to volunteer at an animal shelter because puppies are cute, but also because girls go crazy for that sort of thing. And deep down, a voice inside you asks, if I'm doing this for a selfish reason, should I be doing it at all? But again, 
don't listen to that voice. Your motives may not be pure, but by taking action, you are doing more for the world than someone who does nothing at all. Doesn't matter if that same voice says, working in a soup kitchen is so cliche. Do it anyway. We're too smart not to be cynical. But let's be smart enough to be idealistic as well. Well guys, this is it. The time has come to say goodbye to your room, to your dog, to your childhood. Our time at Hopkins is over. For most of us, it's the last time we'll play on a varsity team or know the name of everyone in our grade. For all of us, we've toasted our last Ski Lodge Day marshmallows. We'll never again be sent off to class. We've pledged our honor here for the final time. So what have I said to you today? Dare to change. Dare to disobey. Dare to take action. My friends, you are brilliant, you are beautiful, and now I ask you to be bold as well. If you go downtown to the corner of College and Grove, you'll find yourself at the Yale War Memorial. It's quiet and cool, and the names of Yale's fallen servicemen are carved on the walls. Above these names is an inscription, and very few people know this, but that inscription was chosen by Hopkins' own Simeon Baldwin in 1912. It reads, Courage disdains fame and wins it. My friends, Hopkins class of 2011, be courageous, cross the line. Congratulations. Thank you.